Last year, Kavo promised to be the universal remote to end all other remotes. Now, after over a year and plenty of updates and lots of viewer requests that we check it out, we bought one and I've spent a couple days with it now. I really put it through its paces and I've decided that it's really cool, right up to a point. So do I recommend it? <sighs> Sorry, not really, but let's dive in and find out why. Thanks everybody for joining us. Today we are going to be talking about the Cavo, but first don't forget to subscribe and also check out the description below with a link to a giveaway we're doing right now. For the Cavo, the Cavo itself, just the facts, it's a $60 box for the box and the remote, not bad. Now you can get voice search, universal voice search across your devices. You get playlists, you can build playlists and a few other extra features. Now for that, there's an extra cost, 45 day free trial, then $4 a month or 40 bucks a year or 120 for a lifetime subscription. Now the box itself has four HDMI in slots that you can use for various devices and one HDMI out slot that goes to your TV. It also has a very powerful, but frankly, kind of terrible remote. Terrible. And it also has these weird teardrop transmitters, which kind of render the very elegant looking box, well, inelegant. Now the reviews that I read before I got this promised a setup process that would be legendary, life-changing even. Well, yes and no. Actually, this review almost didn't happen because of the setup process. If you'll indulge my story for just a moment, First of all, when you plug in the Cavo, the first screen you see gives you no fewer than four ways to learn about the setup process. Watch the video tutorial, live chat, call customer service, please call customer service. This set off alarm bells for me that things weren't going to be as delightful as those reviews had suggested. And I was right. The first thing I plugged in was a brand new Fire Stick 4K straight out of the box and everything seemed okay. I was able to set up the Fire Stick and the little picture in picture that the Cavo provides. But then I hit a wall when the Cavo app on the Fire Stick kept freezing up. So after a dozen attempts at solving it on my own, I gave up and went to bed convinced that I would have to scrap this review entirely. When I came back to it, I did factory resets on everything, the Fire Stick, the Chromecast, even my Wi-Fi mesh network. And after that, I plugged everything back into the Cavo and the setup process this time was a thing of beauty, frankly, so smooth. It walked me through every step of the process. So where was the problem? Was it my devices? Was it my network? Was it the Cavo itself? Frankly, I have no idea, but whatever it was, it means that the Cavo maybe one finicky little box. So just be aware that all those customer support suggestions may end up coming in handy. Now, once it's up and running though, how does the Cavo do? Well, like most things out there, there are pros and cons. Let's start with what I really like about the Cavo. The universal remote works seamlessly. In fact, as I was setting it up, I didn't even need to use the device remotes during the setup process for the Fire TV or for the Apple TV that I plugged in. Now the buttons aren't necessarily gonna work the same across every device. You can see these buttons down here and that can be frustrating. You think, ah, oh, this is gonna be kind of confusing, but they've come up with a really clever way to get around that. They have touch sensitive features on these buttons down here that show on screen what that button will do before you press it. Once you get used to it, you can actually shut that off if it is annoying to you, but I love that feature to begin with. Switching between devices was also pretty seamless. It automatically switched when I was watching a Fire Stick and I started a Chromecast Netflix stream on my phone. So I plugged it in and hit play and automatically the Cavo switched it to that Chromecast stream. So that's a, a point in its favor, no need to wrangle that sort of thing. Now the Cavo app that comes with this that you can download on your phone allows for remote monitoring of what someone's watching. That doesn't mean you get to watch TV on your phone, but it does mean that you can see what's being played on the television. It gives you a frame every 15 seconds or so. This is gonna be great for parents for obvious reasons. You can check in on that. This doesn't work for live TV. It only works for uh, stuff that you are streaming through your on-demand services. Now the voice search across this is great. It does work across the different devices. It isn't quite the same as just using Siri or something like that. You are going to have to learn which commands to use, but it is, uh, it, it's not too bad. You'll get used to it after a little while. The last thing that I really liked was the playlist feature. This is similar to something you would get on say Spotify where you can build different playlists 
and put uh, whatever you want in there. In this case, we're talking about streaming video, right? So I was able to build a list of my favorites and put a few titles in there. Obviously, you can build as many of those playlists as you want and put whatever you want in there. Again, this is a premium feature, just like the voice search. And so if you wanna do this, you are gonna have to pay that continuing cost of four bucks a month. Unfortunately, not everything is sunshine and roses. Like I said, I've got a few cons as well. The universal remote, well, a review on Wired says that Kavo turns your remotes, your other remotes, into irrelevant clutter. Well, kind of. It depends on the remote, actually. For the Fire TV or the Roku, sure, I never had to touch them. But the Apple TV, the thing about the Apple TV is the remote is basically what makes the Apple TV great, and it isn't replaced by the Kavo. Voice dictation doesn't work on here. There's no gyroscope inside, so gyroscope dependent games aren't going to work. Typing on the Apple TV, uh, none of it works quite as well as what you're getting with that remote. Uh, and so there were instances where I found myself a little bit frustrated with this, especially with that device. And besides, the remote itself is kind of ugly and boxy. It's not very pleasant to hold. It's got this little thing on the back of it that I'm not sure what it's for. Also, it appeared at first that loading an app from the apps list doesn't let me select which device I want to use. So if I said, open Hulu, it took me to the Fire Stick automatically. But I have it downloaded on both the Apple TV and the Chromecast, but not on my Fire TV. So why does it do that? Is that just because it's in the HDMI 1 slot? Well, kind of. Because the Fire TV was the first device I set up, it got the default slot for every app. But after I dug around a little bit, I found out that you can change that in the settings. The voice search is another thing that I wasn't quite satisfied with. Like I said, it does work great. It works across the different apps. It works across different services, but it only works with external inputs. It does not work with a smart TV. So if you plug the Cabo into a Fire TV or a Roku TV, it's not gonna work. Lastly, and maybe most importantly for some, the Cavo does not transmit in 4K. At least it didn't from any of my three 4K devices that I had plugged in and it doesn't work with Dolby Vision either. But that's a little less relevant to me personally. It wasn't so offensive to me personally, but if you have a Dolby Vision capable TV, that should be a deal breaker because Dolby Vision is amazing. And if you have the capability and your devices aren't letting you take advantage of that, find a new device. So do I recommend Cavo? Like I said up top, not really, honestly, which is too bad. I was really excited for it, if I'm being honest. The Cavo is not a bad idea. It's not, in fact, even a bad execution of an idea necessarily. In fact, I think it's good. I just don't think it's good enough. I don't think that the minor benefits you get here are worth the ongoing cost. For instance, how many people even have this many streaming devices that they need to worry about? I'm not so sure. And besides, with modern 4K smart TVs, most of them have enough HDMI inputs that you aren't going to have to find, you know, this device to help you split up those inputs. The only thing that it's really gonna do is give you a single remote, which can be nice. I'm a fan of getting rid of the clutter, but is that going to be a big enough deal to spend 60 bucks for the box and four bucks a month ongoing? Speaking of which, like I said, the voice search is pretty good and I really like the playlist feature. I like having that built in and I wish some other devices would allow for that, but those premium features, are they worth that four bucks a month? I don't think so. All right, everybody, hit the comments below. Let me know what you thought of my review of the Cavo. Does this change your mind about it? Do you love it still? Let me know. Also, give this video a like if you liked it, a dislike if you hated it, but don't forget to subscribe so that you can check out more videos much like this one. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.